Mazda discontinued the RX-8 sports car. This nailed the coffin for the iconic rotary engine in new Mazda cars. But recently, Mazda confirmed they're reviving the rotary engine yet again. But it won't be in the way that sports cars enthusiasts dream about. Today, we'll look at Mazda's new three-rotor hybrid engine. Now Mazda may use hydrogen power to revive the rotary engine. The rotary engine has a cult following. Fans love it because it's high revving and can produce a lot of power from tiny displacements. Not to mention that distinct sound. The RX-8, the last Mazda to run a rotary, produced 234 horsepower. All that from a naturally aspirated 1.3 liter engine. Rotary engines are also relatively easy to modify, customize, and build rather inexpensively. In fact, a lot of pro compact drag racers use rotary engines. Rotary engines are a unique design for sure, but it also draws criticism due to its lack of torque, fuel consumption, and long-term reliability. Just look at the RX-8, which achieved a measly 18 miles per gallon combined in a relatively light car. After Mazda stopped producing the RX-8, there were sporadic rumors that Mazda was reviving the engine. And then just a couple years ago, Mazda said it was developing a new rotary engine as a range extender for the MX-30 electric car. Since the rotary can pack a lot of punch in the tiny footprint, the thinking has been that it would work well as a range extender for an electric vehicle. Recently, Mazda filed a patent with the European Patent Office. The diagram depicts a triple rotor hybrid power plant. It's unlike the one in the MX-30 because it's the main propulsion unit, and it's also configured for a rear-wheel drive layout. So we have a rotary engine with three housings. The engine is connected to a 48-volt mild hybrid assist system and rear transaxle. This is somewhat similar to Mazda's Japanese patent for an RX Vision-like coupe. There's also a cooling system to help cool down the engine. Now, mind you, it'll be interesting to see if Mazda's take on this will work because Europe has much more stringent rules for electrification and emissions. I can't imagine Imagine what investment they require just to research and development alone. This won't be cheap for consumers either. But one thing's for sure, it's clear Mazda hasn't given up on the rotary engine. And this is just a glimmer of hope for rotary engine fans. So far, the only successful pistonless rotary engine to date is the Wankel engine. Here you have an oval-like housing surrounded by a triangular rotor. Three operating chambers get formed and they're separated by seals on the three apexes of the rotor. During each rotation, these seals move in and out. We're talking high stress and wear, and actually that's what limits the longevity of the Wankel engine. The problem with the Wankel is that it doesn't burn fuel as cleanly or as efficiently as a piston engine does. That's why it outputs dirty emissions, which is further compounded by the way the engine burns its lubricating oil. But here's the thing. Most of the downsides of the Wankel turn into advantages when you change one thing, the fuel. Just switch from gasoline to hydrogen. It turns out that this design is ideal for burning hydrogen. One of the technical issues with hydrogen fuel is that it ignites early and unintentionally explodes at the heat spot inside the cylinder. But the architecture and structure of a rotary engine inherently means that heat spots aren't possible. That's why many believe that rotary is compatible with hydrogen fuel. Actually, Mazda dabbled with hydrogen rotaries with a few other cars before. In fact, Mazda had a dual fuel version of the RX-8 called the RX-8 Hydrogen RE, and it could switch on the fly from gasoline to hydrogen and back again. This was back in 2003. It had a twin rotor, rotary engine, that ran on hydrogen or gas. Not many people know this, but this was the fifth car that Mazda fitted with hydrogen Wankel engine. When it ran on hydrogen, it produced no emissions. Instead, you got only water vapor. But it turned out to be a limited production car. It was only sold in Japan just for a very short time. In 2009, Mazda released the Mazda 5 Hydrogen RE Hybrid. The drivetrain was taken from the RX-8 Hydrogen RE. Mazda increased the power by 40% and also increased the range. A two-rotor RE Genesis Wankel engine combined for a 30 kilowatt electric motor. This vehicle was produced in small numbers in Japan for demonstration purposes. Nevertheless, it's proof that Mazda's done this before, and not just once, a few times. Recently, there were rumors that Mazda's working on a new hydrogen rotary engine. That's interesting, since most car companies are prioritizing battery electric EVs, but Mazda's following Toyota and betting on hydrogen. But not only that, they're back at the hydrogen rotary engine. It's clear that Mazda has the technical capability to build cars. The problem is, is it financially justifiable? This kind of powertrain is destined to be quite expensive. My guess is they'll probably be reserved for limited edition models only. Ever hear of Liquid Piston? They make pistonless 
rotary engines. It operates on a high efficiency hybrid cycle. Basically, you compress air without fuel to a very high ratio. Then the air is isolated in a constant volume chamber. Fuel gets injected and is allowed to fully combust under constant volume conditions. Then the combustion products are expanded to atmospheric pressure. Liquid pistons rotary engines are not Wankel engines. The liquid piston design reverses the shapes. You have an oval rotor that moves within a triangular housing. The required face and apex seals are mounted on the stationary housing. Also, the compression ratio of the liquid piston engine is 26 to 1. Compare that to a conventional piston diesel engine which uses between 15 to 1 and 24 to 1. The company Liquid Piston is located in Bloomfield, Connecticut. They develop multi-fuel combustion engines that can be scaled from 1 horsepower to over 1,000 horsepower. Their engines are for emerging mobility technologies like electric cars, urban aircraft, and drones. They're also focusing on military and aerospace markets. Their story starts back in 2003. Doctors Nikolai and Alexander Chikolnik invented the innovative HEHC thermodynamic cycle. They also designed the initial X and X mini rotary engines that utilize the cycle. In a hybrid high efficiency cycle, or HEHC, air is compressed to the highest compression ratio, then compression ignited fuel, CI-HEHC, is injected. This is in the X engine. The X mini engine uses a lower compression version of the spark ignition cycle that's standard in most gasoline engines. So, staying near top dead center causes combustion to occur at near constant volume. The engine can run over expanded because the expansion ratio can be designed to be larger than the compression ratio. Skip cycle power modulation provides high efficiency at low power settings while cooling the engine walls and providing partial heat recovery. Also, water can be injected to internally cool the engine. Some of this cooling energy is recovered as the water turns to steam, increasing the pressure in the chamber. And that's how the liquid piston rotor engine works with HEHC. The liquid piston engine isn't a Wankel engine, but is a rotary engine. It has a fundamentally different architecture and operation. In liquid pistons X rotary engine, there are three combustion events per revolution of the rotor. This results in massive power density. Also, there are only a few moving parts, including the rotor, which is the main work producing component and an eccentric shaft. There are ancillary parts like injectors, fuel pumps, and oil pumps, but otherwise there are no other additional moving parts. That's why you can use standard materials on the liquid pistons X engine. Because of this, the liquid piston X engine allows for the use of standard materials. So, what's the difference between the Wankel versus the liquid piston engine? Well, the Wankel engine is known for its excellent power, weight characteristics, and low vibration, even at high RPMs. But, despite these benefits, the Wankel has always suffered from poor fuel economy, emissions issue, and durability issue, especially with the apex seals going out. All these problems are inherent to its architecture and mechanism. First, the narrow combustion chamber prevents adequate flame propagation. Also, it has a high surface to volume ratio, which cools the charge and reduces engine engine efficiency. But the Wankel engine is poorly sealed. This leads to significant gas breakthroughs, which also reduces efficiency. The engine also runs on the same conventional four-stroke spark ignition auto cycle of the piston engine, but there are inherent problems when operating with compression ratios greater than 10 to 1. In addition to being difficult to seal, it's also difficult to lubricate. Oil must be injected into the charge, with most of the oil being burned in order to lubricate the gas seal. And of course, that causes pollution. Unlike the Wankel, the liquid piston X engine doesn't have a three-sided triangular rotor in an oval body with two lobes, but an oval rotor with two lobes in a three-sided housing. The combustion chamber is located in a fixed housing, with most of the gas being forced out by compression into this fixed combustion chamber. This makes the X engine suited for high compression direct injection and compression ignition operation. This isn't possible in a naturally aspirated Wankel engine or a second compression rotor. Also, the combustion chamber may be of any geometry and may be approximately sphere optimized in surface to volume ratio, thereby improving combustion efficiency and reducing heat transfer. And since the top seals of the X engine are located inside the stationary housing, they don't move with the rotor. They don't experience centrifugal force and can be lubricated directly with a small amount of oil to the seal surface through the housing. This means that oil consumption can be reduced to levels potentially comparable to that of a four-stroke piston engine. In other words, it's practically negligible. The unique X engine seal geometry has three to five times less gas blow by than a Wankel engine. This is mainly because the Wankel engine requires clearance at the corners between its side end seals and the apex seals, while the X engine doesn't. The Wankel seals pass through the holes containing the spark plugs, whereas it doesn't. 
the X engine. So all in all, the X engine has some clear advantages over the Wankel engine, including a high power ratio weight. The single X rotor engine behaves like a three cylinder four stroke engine. It's also very simple, only two moving parts, a rotor and a shaft. And like the Wankel engine, the X engine is inherently balanced with no oscillating components. So it has minimal vibration. The Liquid Piston X Mini is expected to be the size of a grapefruit, weighing three pounds and output over five horsepower at 15,000 RPM, so 30% smaller and lighter than comparable four-stroke piston engines. They'll be used in hand-powered equipment, lawn and garden equipment, portable generators, mopeds, drones, robotics, marine boats, and so on. Since the X Mini rotor engine is small, it will allow all these equipments to be smaller, lighter, and quieter. I should also mention that both 70 and 40 horsepower Liquid Piston diesel engine prototypes are up to 10 times smaller and lighter than traditional diesel engines and are up to 30% more efficient. This is all due to the company's patented HEHC thermodynamic cycle. Here's the thing about engines. Gasoline engines are inefficient. Diesel engines are big and heavy. And electric batteries weigh a ton compared to what they output. These characteristics pose significant limits on the range, payload, and efficiency of modern engines as well as increased operating costs. But now you tell me, do you think there's a future for the hydrogen engine? Is it revolutionary or is it absurd? And does the future belong to the new type of rotary engine from Liquid Piston? Please share your thoughts by commenting below. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for your support.